Amos chapter 3. Hear the word of the Lord. It's good for everybody. Hear the word of the Lord. When it says, hear this word. You got to pay attention to the wording. That the Lord has spoken against you. I mean, you got the preaching today. Everything hunky dory. Everything sweet. Everything's great. God loves you. Everything's rich. Your blessings and everything. God couldn't be against you. God can't be against sinners. This whole chapter is about being against his people. I don't know how you come out with a ministry of, of God is love and everything is great. You must not read your Bible. You and your mega churches, you don't study your Bible. Oh, children of Israel. Okay, so we're speaking to the northern part of God's people in the land, the children of Israel, the ten tribes. They have been separated since Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Joel spoke to Judah. Amos speaks to Israel. Against the whole family which I brought out from the land of Egypt, saying, So always God reminds Israel, I brought you out of Egypt. I am the powerful God. Nobody else, nothing else could have brought you out. By the signs and wonders of the book of Exodus. That is my God. My God of the Bible, the Hebrew God, the Israeli God, the God that brought his people, the nation of Israel, who are forever his people, brought them out of the land of Egypt. God has brought me out of the world. Christians want to run back to the world. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. When we're looking at the Old Testament, where we are. There are many nations. There are many people. They come and gone. But there's only one group of people, one nation established by God. The land of Israel. It's not America. Not England, not Russia, Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Abraham, Ishmael, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Now, if God is speaking to his people for their sin, what do you think God's going to do with his church that is the bride of Jesus Christ? But, uh, by, the, by the conduct of the Christians, oh, we're just going to be hunky great. We got the greatest church. We got the greatest pastor. Well, you think that and 20 other thousand other churches think that. And we're all sinners. All have sinned and come to show the glory of God. And as far as the lad to see in church age, we make God sick. Me including. And then there are Christians that America will be, you know, the, the nation above all nations. America, she will not have to pay for her sins. Then God will have to, all the nations that God has judged, he will have to apologize. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, put that to the United States government. Can the Republicans and Democrats walk together and be in disagreement? No, our government's messed up. 
Our government is not a form of, of the Bible government. The Bible form of government is a monarchy, and it was supposed to be God as the king, a church state. And then God ordained for the cry of Israel, he ordained a king, not a president. And the implication answer is no. You can't have a married couple there on everything they don't agree. That's why Paul says you're to marry a Christian if you're a Christian. You can't have peace in your house if you're a Christian you marry a Buddhist, a Catholic. You can't even have unity in your house if you're both Christians. You're both saved. One wants to be right with God and one wants to be worldly. Boy, lion roar in the forest when he has no prey. And the indication is no. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? The implication is with lions you're to study? No. And verse 5 will help us more if you don't understand lions. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Now, gin is not the cocktail drink. It is the trap. And the answer is no. A bird is not going to be entrapped when there's been no trap set. Shall one take up a snare from the earth, a trap? And have taken nothing at all. You're going to put a trap on the earth. And leave it there. And there. Within to, you, you're going to catch nothing. You're going to get. Some, you may not get what you want. I mean you go fishing. You may not get the kind of fish you want. Well, you keep going fishing day after day after day after day. You're going to catch a fish. You go so many, so many, so many, so many. You're going to get something. You're going to get fruit. We have where I come from, New London County, where we go fishing underneath the Gold Star Bridge. We have this fish. I mean, it's a bony fish. We call it cunner. And they are a challenge to catch. And you catch them. You can't eat them. You can slice them up and catch his brothers and sisters. But they're a challenge to catch, and most of the time you'll catch them. You'll catch them in the eyeball, you'll catch them in the stomach, you'll catch them in, in the fin. But very rarely, see what they do is they suck the worm off the hook. You got to have specifically the right hook, and you got to do it right. But you keep on trying, you keep on trying. You're going to get that fish somehow, somewhere. Shall a trumpet be blown in a city? And the people not be afraid. Well, the implication is no. But today, in America, the answer is that my wife, Lisa, and I, we, we were at, at uh, the transmission place for our car. We were sitting there waiting there doing the work on our transmission. I, rem I always remember Channel 8. And Remember we watching it was you know one of those daytime programs something like that. We're just killing time sitting there. And next thing you know, the emergency broadcast system went off. And it said, This is not a warning. This is this is an alert. Please stand by. And what happened is somebody accidentally fell asleep. Somebody hit the wrong button. And the news that night was shocking to find out. The actual alert went out and it left it, you know, we don't know what kind of alert it was, but there was an alert to go out. And they found out my jury of the people ignored it. They didn't pay attention. They didn't stop. They didn't, they didn't even call the police department, the fire. Hey, what's this alert? America is completely oblivious to they're in trouble. 
They don't realize that one week the strawberries are gone. Next week the formula is gone. Next week the grocery store shelves are bare. Gasoline is getting higher and higher and higher. And woe is the bee. And you know, you know what I realize where we are in the Bible? I, I, I figured it out either yesterday or today. I think it was today, studying my Bible. If I were to put the Christian in the Bible, where we are today, we are in the wilderness complaining, griping. Who do you think you are, Moses? We didn't pick you, Moses. We want to go, we want to get a new leader and we want to go back to Egypt. Because we don't like the leader that God or the devil's given us. I, I don't know who Biden is. We as a nation, as Christians, and Christians in quote, we are in the 40 years of wilderness and we're griping and complaining and it makes God angry, but we're holy. I know a man in a church that oh, I want to kill the Democrats. I said, doesn't the Bible say we're supposed to love? Imagine Stiley saying that. When Stiley has to remind you of love, you're in trouble. And when Stiley says that, you might as well call 911 because some people are going to have a heart. Because I never preach about love. I don't know what people say. Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? Oh, bingo! 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 How come the kids are killing the kids in the school? Because you took God out of the school! And it's so funny. Pray for the family. Pray for the teachers. Pray for the school that was this shot up. Why? You don't allow prayer in the school? You know, the barn, the barn door has been open. Everyone shout, the barn door is open, but you don't want to close it and put the Lord back in it. God is bringing his evil. Satan is bringing his evil. And if Satan's doing it, God's allowing him to do it. It's only going to get worse. I read yesterday something about the wheat in India. It's going to cause all kinds of worldwide things. I read today something about our sugar. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And you know what you're going to do as a Christian, you worldly Republican Christian that wants your guns? Oh, we're gonna complain. I don't like the guys. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. And everything you're complaining about, you're not using it for God. I've got to pay six dollars a gallon of gasoline so I can go to Mickey Ratland. But I ain't gonna take six dollars of gasoline to bring somebody to church who can't come to church because they don't have the facilities to come to church. I mean, isn't it funny? Everybody go to church, go to church Sunday, go to church Sunday, and there's somebody who can't go to church, they don't have the facilities of church, and on Sunday they're sitting, sitting at home because no one picked them up. And then you're sitting on Monday, oh, the gas prices, oh, the gas prices. And then you go to your church. You don't hear about the judgment of God. You don't hear about sin. And then you go pick up your newspaper. What is all this happening? For one, your pastor's not doing a good job. If you don't know what's going on, you have no idea what's going on in this world today, your pastor has failed at his job. Because all this is in the Bible. Now, th th don't get me wrong. Don't say, you know, the earthquakes and that, you know. I have no idea when Jesus is coming for his church. But I'm telling you right now, the lack of formula, the, the high prices of gasoline, the fires that are now started in, in California, and, and, and California can't have water, and, and the, 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 everything. The author and finish of it all is God. And if it is the devil, Job 1, Job 2, God told the devil, you can do it, but limitations.
Maybe President Biden is of Satan. God, say, I want I want Joe Biden as president. Guys, say, okay. And I'm listen. I'm not. I'm just saying for guys. All right, you can only have for two years or three years or all four. I don't. I don't know. They're getting ready to say where there, there may be a new pope. I'll say, hey, maybe that's the Antichrist. Guarantee I got some Catholics mad. I probably got some Christians mad. How dare you talk about the Catholics like that? How dare you not? I had a guy, a Sunday school teacher. Well, we don't talk about the religion. I said, exhort, rebuke, in season, out of season. It's not for me. Well, maybe your Bible don't say that. Surely, the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealed it. I mean, that's what God ain't going to do nothing. God ain't helping us. God ain't. But he reveals his secret unto the servants, the prophets. Okay? You know why some Christians don't understand the Bible? Number one, they're not Christians. And they don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh, that was a kicker. Number two, their Holy Bible is not the Holy Bible. It's the Holy Newspaper. You ain't going to get no answers out of that. Number three, their guidance, their, their their God is the worldly God, the God of this world, Satan. They're Christians, they're not of God. They're saved, they're going to heaven, but they're not of God. Now watch. Watch. I know some things in Scripture because I studied Scripture. I love the Lord. And I say, God... President Biden's in office. He's a Democrat. God said, yeah. I pray for him and Jill to get saved. That's what I want to hear. The other day, something, his airplane was, was grounded or something. I said, Lord, protect him. I prayed the same prayer for Donald Trump. I prayed the same prayer for the Clintons. That one right, oh, you can't pray for the Clintons. They're killing everybody. For the Bushes, I mean, I started praying and looking out for the presidents, as far as I remember, uh, Reagan. God, the, you know, I've really never complained about gas, gas, the gas prices. Wow, Lord, you know, thank you very much. It seems like ever since we had this gas problem, we only needed gas once a month. <laughs> wow, thank you, Lord. Grocery store. Look at the grocery store. Look at the formula. Look at my house. It's got full food. There's only one thing. I mean, if i got a complaint against God, there's only one thing. God, I want a wife. Everything else is hunky-dory, great and wonderful. Got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my shopping carriage. You say, what do you mean? I got groceries last night when the house is full. I think I'm going to have me a good old salad tonight. I'm going to say, Lord... I'm the kind of person I pray after I eat. I, I, just, I thank God. Because, listen, if I start eating a meal, if it tastes like garbage, oh Lord, thank you for this meal. <laughs> yeah, this is terrible. And I was like, really thankful? That's, I'm the kind of person I eat that meal, and I gotta lay down and take a nap because that was, like, I, I'm laying down and like, Lord, that was very good. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm backwards. All right, let's keep going. The lion has roared. Second advent. Satan. Okay. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. He's, okay, that's that's Jesus. Who can but prophesy? No, that's not Jesus. Well, what are you saying? That's the man that God, that's Amos, that's Joel, that's Elijah, that's Jeremiah, that's Ezekiel, that's Styling Hayward Say, you tell them what I said. Okay, Lord. Easter's pagan! Here's the, oh, oh, we're going to celebrate it. How dare you, how, how dare you say that? How dare you? Every day on Facebook, you guys say, King James, King James, King James, and you're dying to King James, King James. 
Oh, I don't like it. The Lord said, I like that. Some of those things I write, I write on Facebook, 2 o'clock in the morning, it hits me. I was like, Lord, <laughs> I love this bed. It's so comfortable. The biggest lie I have is if I don't re if I don't write it down, I'm not going to remember it. Lord, can you have me remember that so I can write that on Facebook in the morning? I get it in the morning. I don't even remember what dreams I have. I, okay, Lord, I remember that. Thank you. You don't like what I post on Facebook? Go to God. Okay, that's a lion that roared. You tell them. Rawr. Sometimes some of the stupid things you post, I go post in retaliation without mentioning names what you post. So if you think, well, he posted that because you're probably right. I'm not afraid to say that. If you want me to attach names to it, I will. I'm not afraid to. But there's a difference between a man that speaks for God, of God, and by God. Than a man that speaks when God's not speaking. Published in the Palaces of Ashdod, that's the Philistines, and the Palaces, look at all the palaces. Look at all the rich places in the land of Egypt. Take what I say, Amos, and get it out. Take what I say, Stanley. Take it. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And nowhere does it say in the Bible, go and all invite them to church. Nowhere. Once you publish the word, where there's where there's the word of the king, there's by. All right, publish this word. What's it say? Here, invite people to church. Okay, you're done. No, they don't say that. Invite them to the church is not the word of God. How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to build a fellowship hall? Oh. That's your problem. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to build a church building. They met in houses. You know it's remarkable there's only one woman in the Bible. I read that today. There's only one woman in the Bible that I know of that never provided for her house. In words, exact words. When Abraham, but when God and the angels came, Abraham said, Sarah, yes dear, make them some cakes. We got some guests, bake some cakes. Yes dear. The Bible says she called her husband Lord. I'm not going to get an American woman to do that. Three of those, two of those angels, not the Lord, but two of those angels went into Lot, went into Sodom, and they met Lot. And Lot did the same thing Abraham. But you know what did not happen? It happened in Abraham's tent. That did not happen in Lot's house. Lot made the bread, not Mrs. Lot. Oh no, the pastor's wife. The pastor's wife. Friend, if you were a pa if you were a, a pastor of a church like the biblical church, you would open up your doors to your church, your house. Your wife would have to clean before every service. It's, my wife did that for I think a year and a half before the city of North shut us down. My wife Lisa would clean that house, set that lip, set set that dining room up. So people would come and hear the Bible. And when people came in, she greeted them. She, she had a smile on her face. And she, she lovely greeted and, and, and offered water and all that for them to come. 2008 and 2009. The Guiding Light Bible Baptist Church. You can buy it, still find the website. That's a Bible church. And we were kicked out of another church for doing that. I gave you the name of the church the other day. But I won't know. Ooh, rabbit trails. It's the same. 
So, assemble yourselves in, in the mountains of Samaria. Behold the great tumult in the midst thereof, and the oppression in the midst thereof. So you know, you know what God's told uh, Amos? Start in Israel. Go to Nashda. Go to Egypt. Go to the mountains. Go! Styling, yes. I've shut the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market to you. I know, Lord. Oh, Lord willing, next Thursday, we're going to start a new farmer's market in Volusia County. We used to do the, the courthouse in Norwich. God said, oh, U.S. Marshals, get them out of there. And we went to a city island. Not here in Norwich. I, I, it, we, we sat on an island in the middle of the city of Norwich. Then we went to, in addition to that, then we went to NFA, the local high school. We started freshman year. I mean, they had all... But the freshman class that were there when we started, we were there four years. We were there for their graduation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God said, okay, four years. You did all four years with those kids. All right, I'm moving you to Florida. Fort Orange? Okay, you're done with Fort Orange. Huh? You know, Jesus went all around. You know, Timothy went all around. Paul went all around. For they know not to do right. Oh, put that on the churches today. Put that on America today. That is a loaded verse. Ready? For they know not to do right. Oh, Stiley, that's your opinion. Oh, Stiley, no, say it the Lord. What's God say about the life of the senior church age? You don't walk hot, you don't walk cold, you walk down the middle of the road, you make me vomit. You are lying to yourself. We're rich, we're great, we're wonderful. I know the church. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to build a fellowship hall, and, and we, we got we got a guy to come to take care of all the pests on the grass and everything like that, and we're just going <laughs> to... I remember one particular rainfall, half your property went underwater. Did you take care of that yet? Have you paid your mortgage yet? Now you got a nice building and everything like that, but if we go into another pandemic and people say, I'm not going to church no more, and you can't pay your bills, you've done nothing. You know what the problem with many churches? They don't pay their bills. I know a preacher whose father worked for a bank. He said, you know what the biggest problem with Christian churches were? When they came to him, and I, I guess he was a loan kind of guy or something like that, or some kind of authority was loan. they come to him and they wouldn't pay it back. I know Christians, including me, if I'm going to have work done, I will go to an unsafe person. Because if I'm going to get a bad job, if I'm going to get screwed for the job, let it be an unsafe person. I don't want a Christian to do it to me. They have. You say, Stiley, that's a terrible testimony. No, that's your testimony. Who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. <laughs> well, put that into America. Put that into the world. Put that into the Muslims. You know, they say with these Muslims, you know, these women, I, don't know, I watched a video the day where, where they caught this woman and she didn't have her head completely covered. I forget, the puka, whatever they call it. They beat her on the side of the street and threw her inside of a van. I can only imagine where she ended up. Violence. Gun violence. Hey, you got these Christians today. You know, guns kill. Oh, no, they don't. But where the heck are these bullets coming from? Are they shooting them with their finger? Bang, bang. Oh, shoot. Where did that come from? I'm sorry. I didn't know my finger was loaded. They love their guns more than God. They don't realize guns are killing. 
Oh, not mine. Take your gun and shoot somebody. It won't kill. What, you Superman? Up, up, and away. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Okay, God. Let's pay attention. God said it. An adversary. Well, we know who the adversary is. He's the devil. And he wants to devour. And I'm telling you right now, he's devouring the church. Bite by bite. Get rid of this service. Nobody comes to this service no more. I can't believe how many churches don't have a Sunday night service. But they got movie night. I, I'm sorry, you don't like what I'm saying. Do you take a collection for Sunday for the movie night? Because you'll take a collection for Sunday night. There shall be even round about the land. All right, this would be Assyria. Assyria is a type of the devil. We're looking at Nineveh, the capital of Assyria. That's where Jonah went. He shall bring down thy strength from thee, Assyria, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. That's the Assyrian army coming into Israel like Babylon would come into Judah. So, in the types of the devil, you would look to Assyria. You know, Assyria is a fierce nation. If you were to look how they conducted people during war, how they treated their prisoners of war, you would be in great disgust. And you wouldn't be so offended that, oh, he called me a name, Big Mad Meanie. How about taking you alive, ripping you open, and leaving you for the animals? How about taking you and burying you up to your neck near an ant farm, hill, whatever you want to call it? For insects that eat flesh. How about tying your feet to one horse, your neck to another horse, and then you swap the horses to take off in both two different directions? Didn't we just read earlier this week this this book or the Joel? That they took a pregnant woman, they sliced her in half, and cut the baby out? Oh, look at that, it was a boy. going to be a boy no more. Why? Because of iniquity, we've already read. It's going to get worse. It's going to get harder. And salvation is not going to hell. You know, get saved and all your answers, your, your cancer will go away and your bills will be paid. Uh, your salvation will change where you go when you die, but your gas tank is still going to cost five gallons, five dollars a gallon. You're going to find out the prosperity gospel will not put formula in your grocery cart. Oh, you, you can get the snap from the government, but when you go into the store with that carriage, you usually get three carriages. I know I work for the grocery store. And there's no food on the shelf for you to get. Well, how do you know? It's the same city that you read where they were selling an ass's head. That's a donkey. Both words mean the same. I looked it up. And dove, doo-doo, crap, excrement, dung. Why were they selling it? 
so you could eat. That's the same. Here we are. And during that time, Elijah said, no rain. You know what God's saying when the Syrian army is going to come? Cut off their food chain. Well, what's that mean? All those ships that have the tankers out there, and all those ships that have all those, the uh, uh, what, what's it called? The, 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 the containers? You know, all the, the, the container ships that are out in the middle of the ocean, and they can't come into port, and there's not enough workers to come into port? I read the other day, some of them sunk. They're underwater. You know what that's a picture of? Assyria cut off the food to Israel. Why? Iniquity. What's America got? Iniquity. What's this world got? Iniquity. I've seen some of these videos of these churches in, in the Orient and in the, the island nations and other these nations and they get up and do the boogie woogie. They got the American way of worship. The American way of worship has spread across these churches and they're not worshiping God and the charismatics is spread around the world in this nonsense of worshiping God. It's not God and called iniquity. The golden calves are going all over. And year after year after year, the sins that Jeroboam caused Israel to sin. The sins of Jeroboam caused Israel to sin. The sins of Jeroboam that caused Israel to sin. The, sin. the sins that America is sent out. The sins of, of these churches sent down. Send them shoe boxes, but don't put a Bible in the shoe boxes. Put all kinds of goodies things like that. You know what was great at one time? I was 1990s. Russia opened up the door to evangelism. The big, nasty Russia. You know what Russia said at one point? And the churches went in there. I, I, my wife knew missionaries that went in. Russia said, okay, we're going to allow it underground, but they're going to not your music. Your music is making our teenagers go crazy and wild. Isn't that interesting? This is the same nation a couple of years ago said no to the Jehovah Witnesses. No, you can't come here no more. We've had it with you guys. We've had it with your music. Oh, you're standing up for Russia. No, I'll stand up for any nation that will let, allow. I mean, yeah, they, they persecute Christians. So does America. Try to have a young child in the public school system do a book report on the creation of God, and you'll see what happens. Dear class, my subject is about creation of God and the challenge against evolution. Oh, no, no, Johnny! No, Johnny! 911 with your mercy. Johnny's trying to promote God in this school. Get, get a moment. Get that Bible. Get that. I don't want to hear that. That offends me. Oh, Mary, you don't know what sex you are? Oh, please tell the whole class. Tell what it feels like to be not knowing. Hey! That offends me. Ah, oh, you hypocrites. You hypocrites. Sodomy offends me. It offends God. But you allow that in the school. You can't say, oh, we can't bring God to school because that offends me. Hey, sodomy offends me. How come I can't bring that into school? How come you don't ban that from the school? Not everybody believes in sodomy. Thank you to the Ravens. I don't know what team they are. I think it's the Ravens. A couple of their team members in the, in the spot of being Christians have tore off their rainbow flag off their uniform. Thank you. Thank you to the Raven teams that done that. May God bless you. But you're going to get kicked in the boot. You're going to kick in the butt. But may God bless you for taking that rainbow flag off.
And somebody's going to say, they're going to say, Styley, he's back. Oh, frame him. Get rid of him. He's against the rainbow play. No, 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 no. Sin, sin, sin. And thy palaces shall be spoiled. That's what happens in war. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out the mouth of the lion, Assyria, but do you also see David? I hope you see David. If you don't see David, you haven't studied your Bible. You know, David gave us the illustration of the Antichrist. The lion and the bear. But, here's the Assyrians. Here is Israel. And in the Assyrians, God found two legs or a piece of an ear. What's that? A little remnant of the children of Israel. You're not going to be completely devoured. I will protect some of you. So shall the children of Israel be taken out of the out of that well, taken out that well in Samaria in the corner of the bed. And in Damascus in the cow. So there will be a remnant of Israel north. They're not going to be completely devoured. They're going to be chewed. <laughs> They're going to be scarred. They're going to be scratched. They're going to be hurting. But hopefully it's for their lesson. You know why we got disobedient children? Because you don't use the rat, rod. He's got PDQ, he's got AHD, he's got RBT, he's got XYZ, he's got Billy Blue, he's got Doobie Doo. He needs a red pill, he needs a blue pill, he needs a white. No, he needs the rod. That's what the Bible said. Don't get that book out of here. And those, you know, all the people. You know, spanking your kid is hard. Spanking your children is wrong. Blah, 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 blah. How come there's a period in time in America when they spank their children? They called it child rearing. They never killed anybody in the school. When the teacher carried a paddle or a switch. And then when the teacher switched you at school... And you went home to cry to mommy. Mommy says, well, wait till daddy gets a hold of you. And daddy gave you the switch. Hear ye. And testify to the house of Jacob. All of Israel. Saith the Lord God, the God of hosts. Angel, all, everything. That in that day, in the day, in the day, in the day, in the day. I shall visit the transgressions of Israel. That's when the lion's going to come. That's when the Syria's going to come. When the transgression of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Be Be Bethel. There's the, there's the golden calves. They're at the house of God. Bethel, house, Beth, house, El, God. The altar. The religion of the golden calves are at the altars of Bethel. There are the altars of the houses of God today that are not of God. It's Easter. He won't get off that, will he? Christmas, NASCAR, NFL, NBA, Major League, MLB, whatever. ABC, NBC, Fox, CNN, YOU, ME, our great pastor, <laughs> the horns of the altar shall be cut off. It looked like the altar of God. God's altar had, a, had horns on it. And fall to the ground. Your golden calf gods are going to fall. Your NFA is going to fall. 
Your baseball is going to fall. Your television programs are going to fall. If your pastor is high and powerful and, and, and proud and all, he's going to fall. We're all going to bow down before Jesus saved or lost one day. I will smite the winter house with the summer house. You know, we got people down here in Florida we, we call snow bunny. It's too cold up there. I'm going down to Florida. It's too hot in Florida. I'm going up back north. I got a winter house in Florida where I don't freeze to death. I got a summer house up north where I won't. That's what that is. Snow bunnies in the Old Testament. Houses of ivory. Oh, look how beautiful that multi-million dollar house is. Boy, I bet you that made the animal activists angry. Houses of ivory? That's not so. Houses of ivory shall perish. Great houses, mansions, shall have an end. Everything you put your stock in your house, your car, your boat, your RV, your church building, your team, whatever it is, if it's not for Jesus Christ, it's going to fall. It's going to crumble. It's going to burn as wood, hay, and stubble. You'll get no reward. You know what I say that makes some people very angry? When we are raptured out of here and we are gone, I bet the Antichrist is going to use your church building. I said that to a pastor one time. Oh, he got angry. I can see the Antichrist now. You see the steeple? Call the people. At this Baptist church, for those who want the mark on their forehead. At this non-denominational church, you want the right hand. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be funny. I'd be up in heaven. <laughs> Look what they're doing to your church building. <laughs> Shall perish. You see, perish? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in it shall not perish. Your property is going to perish with you. And great houses shall have an end. And who says it all? Saith the Lord. Where are those houses that are in Israel today? They're gone. Oh yeah, they dug up some of them. But they're not the same. 